please raise your hands. Uh, we will get started with Tony O'Donoghue from RTE, please. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Premier, uh, Jemai Tramatoni used to give us his team the day before, or maybe even two days before, sometimes the week before. Um, when are you planning on, when are you choosing the team that after training? When will you tell the players the team? What is basically is, is none of your business when I talk to, <laughs> to the players and show them the, the lineup. But usually I've done it must day minus one in the afternoon so the players can sleep on the starting 11. As, that's the normal way. If I do it now, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. And the reason for that is to let the players know the night before you don't wait till the day of the match. Yeah, and the, the reason I do it is, uh, is it good for the players to know and think about it. In, in bed, match day minus one, and be prepared match day. And will there be any change in the shape of the RM team from what we've seen in the recent past? You, you'll see when we kick off, uh, obviously. And we're not going to talk about uh, how we play or, or our tactics, etc. You would know that, but it's a fair question. This game has a lot of um, history around it, as you know, I'm sure. Um, obviously, there's a history between the two countries as well. But in relation to the game in particular, have you used that as a, as a motivation for the players, or are you aware of the the consequences around the, the game in terms of security, etc. Yeah, I've been I've been briefed on those things. I think for us coaches, it is probably not necessary to to motivate the players playing against England. I think it's probably the opposite for us to to just remind them what they should be doing on the pitch, focus on the tactics, etc. So. Yeah, that has been kind of what we have been talking about. It's probably to cool them more down and to, to get them excited and motivated for the battle because that, that is probably comes from within them to do good and be motivated. So probably it's, it's uh, we've been saying it's, it's more our job to cool them down and get them focused on what they should be doing on the pitch. Yeah, please. Hi, Jamir. Uh, how's your mood ahead of your first match in charge? I'm really excited. First and foremost, I'm excited to, to feel the atmosphere. Everybody is talking about how good it is, and I know it's going to be massive against England. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to that, working with the players in-game for the first time. See what, what we have been trying to do on, on the trainings will trans, transpar, transfer into the, to the match. So a lot of things looking forward to, and, but most of all to meet the fans and meet um, the atmosphere in, in Abiva. Obviously, England, they got to the final of the Euros, they were ranked fourth in the FIFA standings, so how do you go about beating them? <laughs> well, if, if Ireland has a chance to beat England, that's collective, for sure. Man for man, for man gong ho, probably nine out of ten England would win, so we need to, to play collective against them. Uh, and that is going to be the way to, to win the match tomorrow. Henry, uh, uh, at the squad announcement you spoke about the influence John O'Shea had in selecting that squad because of his experience. So in terms of the team selection, is this very much your starting eleven, or will he have a big influence in that as well? No, I, I would think that we all put in our ideas before we select. Uh, but like I've said from the beginning, they have more knowledge, in-depth knowledge on the players, uh, and their view is 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 big in this camp and probably next one as well. Uh, and in two months, you you cannot know all the players and their characters, etc. I'm trying to observe a lot uh, this camp to know more next next time we meet over. Is everybody fit? Everybody's fit. Yeah. Are you fit? <laughs> yes. Hey. You're obviously well used to playing big games, big opponents in Dublin. Is there something about England and the history and the rivalry that brings out a different emotion in you? No, listen, it's a game It's a game we're all looking forward to. It's a game a few of us have, have played in before. Um, you know, Ireland v England, you know, speaks for itself. Um, and, you know, we're fully prepared and, and looking forward to 
a good successful night at the Viva, but yeah, for sure, looking forward to it. Captain, please. <coughs> Hi, Daniel. Uh, can Nathan Collins or any of your other many centre halves play in central midfield? Yeah, a lot of them can play midfield, yes. Is this something you're considering this game? We'll see, we'll see. If I would be considering it, I would probably not tell you. So. <laughs> Seamus, what are your impressions of the new manager? The new manager? Yeah. yeah, no, listen, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been good. It's been, um, you know, a lot of new information for us. Um, but listen, you can, you can tell by the, the man sitting beside me, first and foremost, good man, <coughs> wants to do well for, for the national team. And um, he's come into a, a good group of, of lads that are desperate to do well for Ireland as well. So. We're all looking forward to it. We've all been working hard. We've all been taking in as much as we can, and um, now we're really looking forward to it. And um, we we wish them all the best with the with the journey ahead. Thanks, Emil. What are your memories of the night Iceland beat England? What did that do for Icelandic football? And can you do the same for Irish football? I hope we would have same result tomorrow. Of course, uh, it was, we were just speaking on the on the. Uh, in the car towards here, that night was kind of special. Everything that we did that night succeeded. Uh, whether it was tactical, was it finishing our taking our chances, defending our goal, and nothing that England tried that night succeeded. So it was just one of those those days. Hopefully, it will come again tomorrow. Uh, but we know, we know, even though we have our best game, it still isn't sure that that will lead into a victory against a good team like England. So we just need to make sure that we have the best game that we can tomorrow and we'll see what, what that gives us. Seamus, you've played under several Ireland managers over the years, but does even you almost have to start again with a new manager? I think you start again, yeah. For me, if, if you know me, every day, it um, doesn't matter how long the manager's been here or if they're in the door, you're always we, well, you should always be trying to impress on a daily, on a daily um, basis anyway. So there is no God-given right to play for your country. There's no God-given right to play for your club. You've got to turn up every day in training and um, give your best what, while, while you can. And uh, then it's up to the manager what he decides with who he plays or doesn't play. But as long as I know that I'm giving my all in training uh, day in, day out, that's all I can control, you know. Thank you Hi. Um, just coming on from the, the Iceland question, well, in terms of the England that you faced then versus the England that you see now that you're setting up, what, what differences do you see between them? Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different team. I think the individual quality, the, the technical skills, the speed of this team is, is much higher than the one we played. Um, also, they're coming off from a good tournament. Um, and I would say the biggest difference is that they have been staying together for uh, two months now and we have three, three days to prepare. So that, that is going to be challenging because they, their routine is so, is so drilled, whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch, what, whatever, and then coming from a good on a 21 campaign as well. So they, they come on a high here, players playing um, Champions League day in, day out. So it's good individuals for sure that we are facing, and and yeah, like the, to answer the question, I think the individual skills is higher than the last England team I faced. Thank you. And just one for Seamus, um, you, you'll be aware of all the noise around Jack Grealish, Declan Rice in particular, and of course Lee Charlton coming back. Um, just wondering what, how you see it. Um, are they going to get up to star reception tomorrow night? Do they deserve it? Do they deserve it? I think that's a leading question there for me to give you a headline. Um, listen, they, they chose what, who they wanted to represent. I've said it for long enough. Whatever they feel they are, that's, that's what they chose to be. And I know Declan came and he played three games. I can only speak of Declan coming in as a, as a person, good guy, um, top player as everyone knows. But I just want, to, want lads that, are, that want to represent Ireland and, and, and we've got that and, and we're eager to do well and them lads have went their own way and um, you know what, what reception they get I don't know but uh, it's kind of it's been a few years now so it's not something that's of concern to me anymore now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, how are you doing? Um, 
There's been a lot of talk um, in the build-up about defensive stability. Come into a game tomorrow night with a packed Aviva Stadium. What can you promise the, the fans in terms of entertainment and excitement from your team? What do you mean with entertainment and excitement? What, 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 you, what excites you? What, what entertains you? What excites you? Well, football, football, attacking football, commitment, uh, aggression. Okay. So just to, to, to understand the question. Um, now, if you play the game in your head, probably England will have more possession than us. So defensively, we need to be really solid, taking the chances that we get whenever we, we have a chance to to play attacking football, go higher up on the pitch. We've already prepared for that. Uh, so I hope it's going to be a, a mix of both, but playing the game in your head. Statistically, looking at past games, I think England will have more, more possession than us. And if we are defending 60% of the time, then we need to be prepared for that. Uh, but that is how I see the game. Probably we will be de defending more than attacking. But when we get it, we have our solutions going forward. Hopefully, we'll score some goals. Whether we will have more possession than them is irrelevant if we score goals from our chances. And just in terms of coming into the week with your tactics in your head, um, how have the players reacted to you, do you feel? And have you had to, have you had to even simplify it more than you would hope or advance it more because they're taking to what you're trying to do? Coming in in such a short notice, um, I think it's, it goes without saying you don't, you don't like to do a lot of changes from the past. So we've tried to, whatever is the staff, the routines, what they do on the pitch, we, we haven't done a lot of changes, but some things that I think is necessary to try to force in in the beginning, we've been working on those. I think the players have been really receptive. We try to explain in a simple manner why we want to do it and then, and then just showing them and both on meetings and on the pitch. So I think they have been really receptive. But in the end, we see that tomorrow. Thank you. Um, uh, Herman, you said that this week a lot of it would be getting to know your squads and that you'd need to kind of familiarise yourself. After the week of training, are you happy with the, the level of knowledge you now have on this playing group ahead of your first game tomorrow? Yeah, I think I've learned a lot this week. Uh, not also of course, meeting the players for the first time. Um, wish I would have had more time just interacting with them, but we, we have to prioritise our, our, our time. But I think after this camp, I have a lot more knowledge on everything than before it came. So it's going to be a good camp for me, whether, whether it's a good result or not. Uh, and I think going forward is a, is a really good camp. I came in to embargo section now, so please go ahead and cancel any live broadcasts. And anything from this point onwards is embargo till 11 pm tonight, so we'll start this section with Neil O'Reilly. Hi, Cameron. Um, you spoke there about trying to cool the players down. Um, do you feel there's still a role for appealing to the emotions in international football? Is that what differentiates it from club football? And have you been in a, in a fixture like this where there's been such crossover where you have people? in both countries who played for the other country and there's ancestry or even more players on both sides as well? No, I, I don't have experience in, in this and the rivalry haven't either done uh, as big as this one. But this, <coughs> listen, the, the, from us, the coaches, it's about the football. It's not about politics. It's not about uh, the, all the other things. We need to focus on what happens on, on, on the pitch. And then probably is a different game for the media people or the marketing people or, or, or security. So we need to focus on what we can do and we can, we, how we can help the players to, to play good tomorrow. That's where we are focused and we'll, we'll try to stick to that. Thank you. I think I think to be fair to, to the manager in that obviously, you know, he's he's only had a short period of time, but we've we've took in the information. I'm sure he can't give us loads and loads all in a few days of time, but we've took in what he's asked of us and um, hopefully you'll see, you know, traits of that tomorrow and um, 
give the best account of ourselves tomorrow, but obviously this is a long process as well, and it'll it'll be the first step along the way tomorrow. But um, the lads have trained well; they've took the information on board, and um, really committed to, to to doing what the manager asks of us. Yes, friend. James, um, similar question to that Neil asked. How much is this game about sticking to the process on the forensic surround and the tactics, and how much? Uh, uh, can you t can you tap into that emotional aspect of this fixture? Because we all know what it is. It's, it's a strike right away. Yeah, you, you can most certainly tap into the emotional side of it. But I think that goes. To be honest with you, any time you put on that green jersey for Ireland, and I get them lads in a, in a huddle beforehand, you can tap into the emotional side of it all. Because, you know, as much and all it is about this, you know, historic game and England, our rivals coming over. For us lads as well, we're representing our country. Uh, unbelievably proud to do to do so as well some amazing journeys along the way for all them lads and myself included to get to this to get to this level so and um, we can tap into the emotional side of course uh, it doesn't matter if that's england scotland wales northern ireland you can tap into because you're playing for your country so hopefully we can do that in a positive way tomorrow and um, but you know we can't just be gung-ho emotion you have to you know have a, have a smart head as well for sure uh, two questions. Heimer, uh, do you name your best and strongest team tomorrow, or do you keep some players back for the Greece game on Tuesday? No, we, we, we select always the team that we think is going to do, do the best for, for us tomorrow, for sure. And what would be a good return from this window in these two games? Well, four points is good, six is better. Seamus, you were one of the few survivors from the Euro 2016 finals, uh, which was a, a great summer for the team and for the country. Is it time that Ireland sent out a signal tomorrow that they're going to be competitive again and uh, have a role to play in the future finals before long? Oh, well, listen, I think that's, that's the ultimate goal as an international player. Um, again, we're talking about it in the way in, and you know, it's all well and good caps and, and you know, gathering caps and all the rest, but. You know, when it's all said and done, you put your feet up and you're retired, you kind of will look back in the memories of France 2016. And um, I think that's where this group now, the younger lads in the group, should be aspiring to get to the major tournaments because that's why we do it and, and that's where you want to be. Gavin Kalinske. Uh, Seamus, uh, before Heimer took a session, he, he, he described your, like you and your teammates as a good character but a little bit too nice. When you hear something like that, what's your response? Yeah, I think maybe it was taken... Maybe out of context, the way that was said, um, there's nothing wrong with being nice around the place, but you know you don't get to this level without um, having a little bit of bite uh, amongst you. And I do think the younger lads, I, I said it myself, you know, it's it's time for for the goal to start being, you know, qualifying for tournaments. So you can take how the manager said that a little bit different. I think it wasn't meant like that because. Obviously, to get to this level, you have to have something else in the locker. But also, we do need to, you know, understand why we're here. It's not just to to pick up caps. It's here to, you know, make the country proud. And and the fans are crying out for tournaments. You know, when you're sitting at home and you're watching the tournaments in summer, you want to be there. The fans deserve to be there. So, um, yeah, maybe we have to toughen up our mindset and make sure that qualifying is is on the forefront. And, and how are you, you meant it in a positive way, but. Um Speaking to the fans a couple of weeks ago to do the full week of sessions with them, what kind of character are you seeing come out of this part of the squad now? I, th I think we can really build a strong team going forward for sure. But like I've said before, probably it's a lot of them are at a similar level. We don't have many playing, for example, Champions League. We have we win at Liverpool. We have the, the Celtic guys. Well, we need to push players at a higher level. Um, that is one thing, but but it, it's it's a kind of a really an equal squad. So it, to pick a starting eleven it is not easy. To pick twenty three men squad is not easy. But it would be nice to have more players like Shame who's been doing it at a high level for a long time, and it's kind of given that he is that he's there if he is fit and and ready to come. So it would be nice to have maybe. Um, what, what's, what's the word in English? Have like a spine in the team that is always there and then you pick players to support them. I think when you look at it, it's, it's a lot of players that stake a claim. I can be there, I can be there. But 
I would like it to be like this undisputed. This is a starting element. It would be nicest for the coach to have it like this. Jump on, please. Uh, hi, Rick. Just uh, your first week in camp, you said, and you're three, four sessions in. Has anything surprised you from what you expected? No, I was told there was always a good weather in, in Ireland. <laughs> No, 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 it's nothing that surprised me. I, I, I kind of prepared that the, the staff has, has, has prepared me for this one. Uh, facility is good, hotel is good, uh, and I'm here to observe and, and look and see if we need to change some things. I would say most things are, are really top class when it comes to the setup and the staff around really professional. So I'm, I'm happy with the cup in general. Hopefully we can add in wins into that that knowledge and that experience for me. Uh, Hammer, um, you have experience both with, with Iceland and uh, playing against teams that are in the top ten as people around. Um, do you prepare differently for those games than to games from against others around your level? And what sort of, do you have an overriding sense of how you approach this game? No, normally we would prepare in the same way. That's kind of what we need to do, especially um, with teams like Ireland, not coming together too often. So it's, it's six camps a year, each camp is a week. So I think the, 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 the way forward is to try to have consistency in what you're doing, consistency in how you're playing, and then trying to build on that in the future. Whether we're playing superstars, or the best teams, you shouldn't be a lot of difference in how you prepare because you don't have time to be always changing from this to that. Just be better in what you're doing. And I think for Ireland to go forward, to play a good collective team, I think we, we can never succeed unless we do it as a, as a unit, as a group. So whether we play England or Greece, it's kind of the same philosophy, same way of working, same way of playing more or less with a little tweaks here and there, but going from one style to another style in, in two games in a camp is really difficult, really difficult. As far as Seamus and I have seen something along those lines, like in the last sort of five, six years, you've played, played a lot of France, Belgium, Netherlands, you have your experience of those games against the really sort of creme de la creme team. What are those games like and what can you take from them against the European Union? Yeah, no. Listen, they're, they're the games that you want to be you want to be involved in. You want to play against the best at all times. And I think in some of the games you mentioned, we we give a good account of ourselves in the games and just missing that last little bit at times in some of them games. Um, but yeah, you can. I think for the lads in there as well, the younger lads that have slowly but surely gained all that experience of playing these big nations as well. That um, nights like tomorrow become um, a bit more kind of normal for them as well. So. I know it's England, but I mean, we've had some big games, big na nations come here, so it's another one tomorrow. And, and as I said, everyone's looking forward to the game and can't wait to get going now. Thanks very much. Training starts at 11. Thank you. Thanks.